What is up, guys? I'm Charles Williams, aka the Swole Fester, here to educate you on health, fitness, and social being. Today, guys, Saturday, January 19th, it is day one of week two of my second block in this offseason. Now, this block does not look all that different from my last block. I will be going through like the days um, that have some differences and showing you kind of like what's up as far as that. Uh, for example, today is my SB intensity day, and before you guys know that, I had paw squats, um, beltless deadlifts and then just normal competition bench. Well, now we're back to just, you know, full-on competition squats, um, so no pause, competition deadlifts, so my normal competition deadlifts with my belt on, and then competition bench press. So I'll be taking you guys with me through that today, um, pretty much just, you know, giving you guys a few things that I'm focusing on now that I've transitioned from, like, more of the, uh, you know, similar very, you know, similar comp style variations, like beltless deadlifts aren't that different from your normal deadlift. Uh, paw squats, a pretty close variation of your actual competition squat, and kind of showing you like what I'm focusing on now that I've transitioned to um, more comp specificity on this day. And last week went really, really well. I believe I worked up to a uh, top set of four with 396 pounds at RP6 on squats. Top set of three with 474 pounds on deadlift, about a RP5. And a top set of three on a bench press with 275 pounds at about a RP6. And then, you know, I have my usual back down work that I do after that, which you guys will be seeing that today for those of you who maybe haven't seen this day for whatever reason. And uh, the one thing that I wasn't happy about my deadlifts, which was such a rookie mistake, is I've changed my setup a little bit in the sense of, you know, I still do the top down setup as far as my bracing. I hip shoot pretty hard on the very first rep just because as I raise um, my hips up and my entire upper body up, it allows me to... For that moment, even though with like once again, as I've said, several times on the channel with my leverages and dude, how my hips are served, getting in a hundred percent neutral position on the conventional deadlift is difficult for me. When I raise my hips up like so, it allows me to like get into a more neutral position once I hip shoot back down and drive the weight back up. But on the second and third rep, all I do is simply control the weight back down, maintain that position, maintain the slack being um, being out, and then just drive it back up, which usually works really well. But on this time around, um, I let the bar get away from me on the second rep and the third rep, and then take the time to kind of bring it back. Now, usually when I hip shoot for every rep, that hip shoot allows me to kind of just get the bar back where I wanted to. But since I didn't do that, the bar got away a little bit further away from me on each rep, which is like a rookie mistake. It still felt true to RPE, but it caused me to have more um, lumbar flexion than what I already usually do in my conventional deadlift. So going to make sure I clean that up today so that I can move, you know, a little bit more weight for the higher RP today, but, you know, still keep it true. And other than that, yeah, let's get to the gym. Let's go make some gains. All right, guys, so I just finished all my movement prep mobility work for my warm-ups. Um, a lot of you constantly ask, oh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, man. Let's get a champ ready. Now, <laughs> now, a lot of you constantly ask me, like, you know, how long does my movement prep work take me? Usually nowhere, long, you know, not much longer than between like 10 to 15 minutes, just depending on like, you know, what I'm doing, how I'm feeling, how many rounds of each thing that I do. I usually do anywhere from like two to three sets of each, like, you know, movement. Um, whether it's, you know, hold this for 20 to 30 seconds or, hey, do 10 reps of this. I usually do like two to three sets of each thing. Um, but it's always worth doing, guys, because I feel so, especially on days like today when it's really cold and like you feel like just really tight and don't really feel opened up, I always feel better once I get under the bar. Before I started doing such extensive movement prep, which, you know, I've always done some type of movement prep, but I got way more extensive with it um, at the beginning of last year, all the way through this past year up till now. I used to like, during my warm-ups under the bar, I would feel good when I got about halfway through my warm-ups under the bar. And then I would feel open up and acclimated. But now, as soon as I get under the bar, I already feel good from all the, you know, priming that I've done with my so it's worth doing. As for how long my workouts take, it just depends on the day. My All right. <laughs> my SPD intensity and my SPD volume days usually take anywhere from three to four hours just because, you know, squat, bench, and deadlift, you know, build up sets, top sets, back down sets. But then all my other workouts um, usually take no longer than like about an hour, hour and a half at most. Uh, but yeah, 
Right now, I'm gonna start my build ups. I have to build up to a top set of four, this time at RP7. So, since I hit 396 last week, I'm thinking we're gonna finally break it to 400. It's gonna feel really good to hit 400 for this normal competition reps. I've already been hitting 400 for like, you know, pause reps, but to just know that I'm like, you know, repping in 400s for my competition squads, it's gonna feel good mentally. Anyway, let's get to it. Alright guys, so as you can see, Warren was feeling really good, build ups went really, really well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go for 407 point, whatever the conversion is, um, for my top set of four at RP7. If you guys noticed, because I said I was gonna tell you about the differences between like, you know, the variations and then what I'm focused on now for my technique and queuing, well for pause squats and then my competition squats is the exact same thing. With pause squats, um, my focus on maintaining as much tension as possible and maintaining position all the way into the hole, exploding out of the hole while still maintaining that position. Now, even though with this new low bar position, you know, all the movement prep I've done to like, you know, fix my squat, everything I did um, to fix my squat, which I'll have that video link in the description down below, I, exp I explained to you guys that, you know, for me, position is still key. Like, even though I can move much faster with this new position, I'm not focused on just diving into the hole and getting out as fast as I can. I'm still focused on maintaining as much upper back tightness as I can, keeping that lower back extended, maintaining position into the hole, and yes, being explosive out of the hole, but I'm not even worried about my quads. Like, I'm very quad down in my squad anyway. I know that I'm gonna drive up once I um, hit depth and get that hamstring reflex. I'm just focused on keeping my back as tight as possible. For me, guys, position equals speed. If I lose position like how I used to, um, how I used to squat, like if I hit the hole and just try to blast up, but then I end up rounding, I'm just gonna lose position and slow down anyway. Versus if I focus on maintaining tightness and maintaining position, then everything moves a lot faster and smoother. So, as I've explained to you guys before, right proper form isn't just about you know injury prevention it's about being more efficient in the movement you can lift more weight for more reps um and usually faster at, at that and for a lot of people like i said who are more like, who are more, people who are more like brutes for example like my boy derek um my boy russell or i'm sure you guys either follow russell or you've seen derek on my channel and the fact is with both of those guys they're um they're built for powerlifting much more than i am and yet they still both care about you know being as technical as possible. Because even though they could probably just power through, even if they lost form and positioning, they still focus on maintaining proper form. So how much more do I need to, as somebody who, quite frankly, like, you know, isn't built well for this, like form is everything for me. If I want to like keep building and keep getting stronger without risk of injury and just, you know, lifting as efficiently as possible. Anyway, yeah, enough ranting, let's do this top set. That felt amazing. I've never moved 400 that fast. I don't think I've ever read 407 for four reps either. So that's a PR. Like, I basically didn't. I'm, I'm calling water on this man. <laughs> I basically didn't need Michael there, man. But like, it's like I'm so used to like 400. You know, like the heaviest I got up to on the pod squats was 413. So there's no reason I should be able to do this. But with pod squats, you know, I made sure I had a spot, and I almost always have a spot when I'm working in the 400s. But that move so easily, it was just like, bruh, we making gains.
Alright guys, so back downs on squats. Felt pretty good all in all. Um, it's just crazy to know that like no matter how slow my squats may feel now, it doesn't matter what the weight is. On any given set, my last rep is clearly faster than what like my first rep would be on my sets before like, you know, I made all these changes and adjustments. Like for those of you who haven't seen it, just go look at any of my squat videos from like 2018 this past year. It, it's it's oh, it's crazy how different it is. Um, but anyway, next, got deadlifts. Working up to a top set of three at RP6. I already told you guys what I'm focusing on as far as deadlifts at the crib, so let's get right to it. Alright guys, so we got bench next. Man, all I'm really focusing on my bench is um, once I'm in position, rather than just retracting to pressing hard during the setup, once I unrack, I emphasize the retraction to pressure even more, and I fight to retract even harder on the way down. Before I used to kind of like just get set up, unrack it, and lower the weight, but because I'm thinking like, oh hey, I'm retracting to press, I'm set, but now I'm focused on fighting to retract even harder on the way down, build up as much tension as possible, then once it hits the chest, just explode up. So pretty basic cues. I've pretty much broken my bench down a lot to you guys in other videos. And unlike my squat and my deadlift, it's like my bench is already pretty advanced for my weight class. Like I walk around like, you know, in the 160s, my best bench is 347 pounds. So I don't have like specific like number goals for my bench, the way I do with my squat, my deadlift. But as long as it goes up, that's what I care about. I guess if I had to pick a number goal, it'd be cool if I hit like, you know, 363 at some point. Yeah, I might even necessarily say some point this year. Like, as long as my bench is going up, that's all I care about. But anyway, let's get to it. All right, guys, finishing this video out with the voiceover. And yeah, like I said, man, there's not a whole lot to say about bench press right now. I'm just, you know, happy that I'm able to come in and get the workload in. Um, one of the hardest adjustments for me on this past block was getting used to benching four times a week, as well as getting used to, you know, the SPD days where I bench at the very end after squatting and deadlifting already, since I was pretty much used to having, you know, both my intensity bench and volume bench work on their own specific day, but I've definitely acclimated to it now. Um, and I'm feeling a lot better on this day. On the last block, I had to make a lot of adjustments on this specific day in terms of my back down sets and like my percentage based back down work. But um, for the past couple of weeks on this second block, I've been able to just come in do the workload that's prescribed and get through it. So that in and of itself is kind of like an ability PR for me on top of like, you know, the rep PR that I got with the 585 pounds on deadlift, as well as the 407 pounds on squats. So everything's going really, really well with my training right now, guys. And like I said, just gonna be, you know, checking in with you guys, showing you guys this, as well as keeping up the usual informative content. And yeah, I'm just in a really good spot as far as everything. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below, let me know what you did. If you not, leave a comment down below, let me know what I can do better, like the video, share, subscribe, keep it simple, specific, scientific, and I'll catch you guys later.